All righty, we are recording. Welcome everybody. So good to have you all here. Yeah. Up. Oh, should we let Ron in? Yeah. Let's let's admit Ron. Did you say he's being admitted? Yeah, that's what it says up here. It asks. That sounds a little dangerous to me right there. Okay. Well. Too late. Yeah, we already let him in. Well, I meant being admitted to an asylum. Oh. It's too late for all of us. <laughs> I hope so. Hi, hi, Peter. I see you're back for more. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> hey, Ron. So I'd like to begin by asking a question. What, it, what is the difference between knowledge or knowing and unknowing? What is the difference between knowing and unknowing or not knowing? Would you say that knowing is for the me to add to the me so the me can get somewhere and unknowing is kind of antithesis to that? Yeah, I'm just putting the question out there. I don't have an answer. I think of knowing as the brain and unknowing is just is. To know requires a me. To know it typically requires somebody to be there. Who knows? Ah, the, the yeah, knowing requires a, know, a knower. Yeah, thank you. What about unknowing? Does that require someone who knows they don't know? It just is. It just is. No, it could require a person too. A spiritual person who's trying to unknow, you know, yeah. that could be a person too. Nice. Yeah, that's, uh, Corey's speaking of a pretty predictable but subtle um, trap is the spiritual who, person who gets it, who has the intellectual understanding. Okay, I, I know that I, you know, there's no one here that knows anything. It doesn't get you any closer to the truth though. No, because they're both words, right? So knowing is a word and unknowing is a word. Right, and to unknow would still require a knower to know that they don't know. It's a mental movement. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. You can fill in the blanks. Well, it sounded like you were going to say mental masturbation, but you would never. Who would ever say such a thing? <laughs> but in a way, that's what the me is. If you think about it, it actually is a good word. Because it is mental masturbation, because you're the only one suffering. So it's all, it is kind of all about you. In a way, we can say the me is made out of knowing, or as Dan said last week, the me is made of story. So story is me, I'm story, and I'm trying to get somewhere, right? Me is always on the move. This is, this is never enough.
I think we all finally got it. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've been waiting for this guy. I have a new face. On, I've seen him on Facebook. I want to call him Nico. I'm going to see if he'll let me. I don't think I'm saying it right. So you can see the me when it's seeking is on a journey. And in seeking, knowledge is valuable and more knowledge is more valuable. And deeper knowledge, the deepest, those really juicy tidbits <laughs> that's really going to, you know, blow my mind. Michael, it makes me think of, um, I put this out on Facebook which, you know, which lands with you? The older I get, the more I know, or the older I get, the less I know. Are you catching where that's pointing at all? I mean. But look, there's nothing to know. So there's nowhere to go. Right. Well, that's the next level. But I mean, I was just kind of pointing to the dissolving, the surrender, the humility of- I'm sorry, Joan, did you, did you use the words next level to me? Oh, don't even do that. shoot me. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. This is it, guys. <laughs> this is all that's happening. We can make up stories. Oh, I'm in time and I'm heading somewhere. But if you look now, right? There's just this. And um, I had a funny thought. Uh, I sent Corey uh, a video of a guy named uh, Terrence Stevens. So he's really into deconstruction. And one thing that occurred to me was that, take a look at your com computer monitor, right? You see, you see your computer monitor right in front of you? Okay, that's more real, that's more real than the me. The computer monitor actually exists. Now look for the me right here, right here, right now, right? Where else? See if you can find the me. So that's the cosmic joke, that the me is seeking for enlightenment, but it's, it's never really questioned. What is seeking enlightenment? Well, me, I am. Well, what is that? Is there anything to it other than a story? This computer screen's really here. So you can have feelings, sensations, memories, ideas, words come out of this mouth, but all that doesn't add up to a separate me. You can't find that. Michael, I would argue that the computer screen is not here. Well, that's, we could go into that. <laughs> If you want to deconstruct that, I wouldn't argue with you, Corey. But I just kind of want to make the point that of the two, because the idea that you really have a me to get rid of, it couldn't be a bigger trap. But here's the thing, though, like, what I found for me, which was very, very helpful was, like, with the deconstruction, deconstructing, like, the outer world, so to speak, you know, the computer screen, the birds in the background, 
you know, deconstructing all of that really helped me thin out the me because it's easier to, for me, it was easier to do that, you know, to listen to a bird and say, wait a minute, I'm only interpreting that as a bird. That's just a sound, right? My mind is saying that's a bird because I've learned that. But an alien coming to earth wouldn't know what that is. So just keep continually repeating that with everything really helps thin everything out, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So the video is really good. I sent the link in chat if anyone wants to look at it. Uh, the second half in particular of that video is really, really good. And he gets very into deconstruction, which is really a, just another way to go on this, but it's, yeah. it's helpful. Yeah, I agree, Corey. The first hour, um, Leonard, who was talking about, kept trying to answer the questions from the mind. You could see it. But there's actually a benefit because it exhausts itself after enough time. You begin to run out of because one thing that um, Terrence is really good at is cornering and not letting you off the hook, not letting you say, yeah, but what about this? He stays right on it and goes, no, we're not interested in that. We're just looking for the me here. Is the me here? Yes or no. And who talks to you like that, right? Nobody ever, you don't go into Target and they go, oh, can we scan for your me, please? So everybody's just accepted, but there's these oddballs that come to meetings like this that something feels off. And so that was for me, something felt off about identifying as a me, as something separate from life, something inside me uh, didn't buy it. If anybody has any comments or questions, please feel free to unmute and jump in. Might have to mute somebody. Let's see if it's Joyce or Dan. But please unmute if you have a question or comment or would like to jump in or if this isn't clear. It helped me to hear the um, taking the point of view of an alien because they have no labels when they come here. So looking from the point of view of an alien really is something to landed with me. So watch this, landed, landed with who? No, no, stay with it, don't. <sighs> This isn't about right or wrong, Joan. This is about you noticing when you say it landed with me. It, this is for all of us. Well, it. Um, Who's that me that it landed with? Can I find that one? Something identified with looking at things without labels. Right, but something is different than me. Yeah, well, there's something in there, I don't know. Well, I know, but you... Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah. But it's very noisy in there. <laughs> Who cares? Something's uh, something is listening to it in something something's listening to it. Is that, um, yeah, but is that you? Are you listening to it? 
Is that you? Are you the me? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. It kind of goes in and out. How about right now? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> who just, who said, yeah, I, I don't know. Who said that? Where I that? don't know. <laughs> right. No, but really, Joan, yeah, you don't, I don't know. know. I don't know either. Do you guys get it? We, we talk as if these are our words. Well, I love the Rumi poem who says these words that come from my mouth. You know, I don't know what I'm going to say until it comes out. Most of the time, I don't think about what I'm going to say. Sometimes I, sometimes people don't like it. And I'm like, well, I, that's what's coming out. I don't know. Um, When I really feel it though, I get to the exact opposite place. Um, I feel like I'm everything. You know, when the, uh, when the, uh, the me is everything, when the boundary between inner and outer goes and I, you realize that's arbitrary. And the question to me that brings a lot of bliss is not, where am I, but what am I not, you know? It's like, I'm this tree, I'm this bird, I'm this, uh, I'm this screen with all these other me's, you know, it's everywhere. It's, uh, you know, nothing is yours, but then everything is yours and everything is you and everything is us. And that to me feels uh, juicier. Yeah, well, I would just say it's all it. Pardon? I would just say it's all it. There's nothing that's not it. Right. Even the, it's the, even the parts that you don't like. Oh, yeah. If it's all it, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. But the me wants nothing to do with the bad and the ugly. That's the problem with being thinking you're a me, is you're going to parse out the bad from what you think is the good. And that's a full-time job and it's exhausting. Yeah, but me is it too, you know? Mm -hmm. It, I like that it, it's probably better than me. <laughs> that's a word I mean. I want to say hi to somebody. Is that, am I saying it right? Nkosi, can you say hi? Muted. Hi, how are you? Oh, it's so good to have you. I've seen you on Facebook. Hi. Yeah, I'm here for the first time. Hi. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Uh, where are you? Yeah, thank you. Where are you located? South Africa. South Africa. And how do you pronounce your name? Nkosi. 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 Yeah, Nkosi. Simply Nkosi. Okay, good. I was close. Oh, well. Thanks for joining us so late. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's 3 a.m. here. <laughs> wow. It's early. Yeah. yeah, in the morning. So you might notice in order to have a problem, I have to tell a story. So the me and story are one and the same. But does this moment right here, does this need a story to be? What's being? What's actually being now? Does that need any story? No, but the story needs it.
How does a story need? Corey. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it's like the guy said in that video, you know, this story needs it. it you know, consciousness can have the story, so to speak, but the story can only exist in that consciousness. I'm in duality now. I don't want to be, but you know what I mean? The story can't be without consciousness, that screen of con. It's like the movie, like Michael has always said the movie with the movie screen. The movie can't play unless it has the movie screen behind it to, as the canvas. But the screen can exist without the movie. Right, but the movie, this is kind of an illusion. You're right. Like I said, it's duality. It's 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 using the thorn to remove the thorn. It's the best way I can say it, yeah. but you know. I didn't mean to be non-dual pedantic with you. I just wanted to clarify what you, what you meant. <laughs> So back to that statement that Tim Kliss made about not knowing the difference between knowing and unknowing. That's so powerful because normally the me says, oh no, knowing is much better than not knowing. Well, what do you think I'm doing on Google all day long and just increasing my knowledge, learning, learning. More knowledge is better and deeper knowledge is best. So I got to keep digging. I'm on my way. Where? I don't know, but I'm just seeking as hard as I can. And it's terrible. It's really a hamster wheel, guys. The seeking business, you're not going to get anywhere. You you never move. This is the incredible part. This This is it. This doesn't become anything else. It's always this. So what do you have to compare this to if it's always this? What occurred to me is in order to assert like a way to, a way how knowing manifests itself is asserting a standpoint like when I dig in my heels about something and assert a standpoint, I'm basing it on thinking I know. And it's kind of scary and it's, it requires, I, humility is the term that comes to mind, even though, yes, it's a human quality, but humility means I really don't know. You know, I, I admit it, you know. And the opposite would be arrogance. You know, I, I know. So really, Peter, we're, we're not talking about either one of those. It's neither arrogance, which is that you need a me, and even humility, you need a me. You can't define this because it's everything. And so the me just ignores that. Because you can't define this because it's everything, the me ignores that and just has its own little dream world that it knows and deals with. But that... It doesn't exist. I mean, it's a story. Like the story of Santa Claus only exists when I tell it. If you're not telling the story of Santa Claus, where is it?
So this meeting is very unusual because it's, it's not giving you anything. There's nothing to get. This is the exact opposite. It's the, we'll just say, falling away of this love of being a me, the seeing through of the me, the dissolution of this false identity that had me tied up in knots. So you, you get nothing. Now, is there a resonance? You know, it's like the birds chirp. What does the birds chirp mean? It doesn't mean anything, and yet here it is. You may be shocked to find out that you don't need to know. You don't need to know anything. The me isn't doing the moment. So if you need somebody's address or email, the body knows how to get it. It doesn't need you. If you're hungry and you need to eat or go to the bathroom, the body already knows how to do that. Life knows how to do that. It doesn't need you. Corey alluded to the fact that the monitor too is an illusion. And the easiest way to see this is to start to notice that everything is intrinsically empty. I mean, isn't that unknowing right there? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, very good, right? So we can say it's really powerful when you realize that words are just a representative of something that we don't know what is. So even though we say computer screen, that's just for language, that's just for convention, so you know what we're talking about, but you don't really know what this is. That's the thing, we don't really know what any of this is. That's the freedom. It's, it's like you're so honest, you finally are come clean, you go, I don't have a clue what's going on. And who would who would have ever guessed that could be so liberating? Like, where did you get the idea you're supposed to know what's supposed to happen and what to do about it? That's what every me thinks. Maybe we maybe we got indoctrinated in school or something where you had to have an answer. I, you know, like, yeah. yeah, you know, you were forced to like, oh, well, you need to know something. And that's the indoctrination. 
think maybe school had something to do, you know, public education, uh, you know, it's like you spend all these years constructing something and then once so, something happens and you're like, now you want to deconstruct everything, you know, it's just, um, but I'm just trying to, you know, there was, there was an answer, you know, in kindergarten, you raise your hand, there's an answer. Well, I agree, Joan. We could say that that conditioning. We talked about that. Yeah, before. conditioning. We can say that's conditioning. But right here, I'm pointing out that even that's a story. And so even that we don't know. Well, that was a place in conditioning where not knowing was not a good thing. But you know, on the path, I mean, it's, you know, the words, the convention of words are very limiting. Right, but it makes sense, right? Because imagine pretending that you knew what something was and you didn't really know what it was. So you think you know what something is, but you don't. It's not whatever you think it is because if 10 people look at a record album, those 10 people are not all gonna have the same exact reaction. Some are gonna like it, some are gonna hate it, some will be in the middle. It's all, it'll be all over the spectrum. So there's no one way. And the me thinks its way is the way. But every me is thinking that, you see? <laughs> So the way that we all ended up here, all on this screen together, is that we all once upon a time learned how to pretend. We, as babies, we learned how to pretend, pretend to be a me and pretend that all of the things that, that we're uh, getting of knowledge that I'm getting is real and that the story is real. Okay, we all learned to do that. If we didn't learn that, we just stayed like the alien. You know, the baby that's born is like the alien. It doesn't have any knowledge about anything. If we just stayed that way and we didn't learn to be a me in a world with other, you know, people and all of this stuff that we know, you know, we, we wouldn't, right? We'd be like, you probably either not alive <laughs> or, you know, in, in some extremely autistic state of not, not relating to anything. So, so we learned how to pretend, but then we forgot that we were pretending. That's the key. And so like we come here to this meeting to kind of remind ourselves, remind each other, because even as we can hear how we're talking, we kind of know and we're, and we're pointing it out to each other. Oh yeah, this isn't true. But then at the same time, we're also, there's something that's keeping it going. That's keeping this idea, this, this pretend person. It turns out that's like a separate person, right? Like an alter ego and a, a separate identity. Like we've talked about, I'm carrying this pretend person, this pretend construction that we know all the stories are, are about but somehow that's not me because I'm still me. I'm still the reality that's at the basics of all of it that doesn't have a story. No story attaches to who I actually am. So anybody want to take that, take that on? So we learned how to pretend and that we're pretending a world, but then we forgot we were pretending and that creates the division. That reminds me of the Woody Allen joke I shared here once before where it, he said, my brother-in-law thinks he's a chicken, but we don't have the heart to tell him because yeah. we need the eggs. <laughs> yeah, Woody Allen is, is, is oh. really great. Yeah. Michael knows I, I, uh, I often uh, yeah, make reference to the great guru Woody. Yeah, some of the things he says are pretty amazing, yeah. And his movies are just really, I mean, that's why they're so funny 
particularly their earlier ones, they, because they're just really beautiful at showing how the me works. And uh, anyway. I remember that being very, very young um, and doing stuff that was wrong. And my mom would say, think. <laughs> yeah. And I would think, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> what is she talking about? Think. What does that mean to think? <laughs> Probably some of my first thoughts was trying to figure out what the hell to think meant. <laughs> I like the uh, I like the Adam and Eve story. Looking at the Adam and Eve story like that, you know, um, the eating from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil and being. A, all of a sudden finding out that you're naked and being expelled from heaven. Nice metaphor for that. Yeah, it's it's the self-consciousness. That bite of the apple, that knowledge represents self-awareness, the illusion of separation, that I'm separate from life. It's not true. That's why I don't care if you feel separate. It doesn't matter. That's just the quality of that energy is it feels like separation, but it's still bullshit because what could be separate from life? It's so free, it can appear as separation. Imagine that. I've got a question. Yes. Uh, who, who takes the body to be real? Is it a me? or is just this? Can you ask again, please? Who takes the body to be real? Ah. No. Is it a me or just this? Well, let's look. I, lo I love the question. A man after my own heart. So, he asked a good question. Who takes the body to be themselves? Is it me or just this? Let's me look. or this? Let's look. Wait a second. Me is this. <laughs> so what but isn't is the body isn't the body also a label or a concept yeah but but he's asking what identifies the body as being them it's a great question it really gets to the heart of what we're talking about And of course, it doesn't have an answer that that we can say in a story, because any story, any answer we start to give, we're starting into the story again, telling the story. But the story is never about this. Do you guys get that? The story is never about this. Now the problem with the Garden of Eden business and eating the apple and now I have knowledge is that, okay, now I have uh, made myself into God. I basically taken on God's job. That's what, that's what it means, right? Because, you know, now I have to can go to my knowledge. I can't just let, I'm, you know, just using the words of the, of the you know, God and all that of the, of the story until that apple until I ate the fruit, God was taking care of everything, as it were. I mean, whatever it was, and there was, there was no need for no, knowing anything, right? Whatever was needed to be known was already just being what it was. In other words, I had, and now I eat, I have this knowledge thing. Now I have made myself the the authority, and it all, you know, that's why I need to know. And then once you just take that one little bite, 
there's no ending because then now I need, I'm in the knowledge and I need more knowledge <laughs> and I can never get enough because how much knowledge is enough to be God? And being God means I know what to do. I know what the right thing to do. I know what, you know, I know what is enough to know what to do and what is right and what is good and what is, right? But I'm just this thing in the middle of this other thing. <laughs> and I don't know what any of it is, but I got to forget that because now I'm the authority. Now I'm God. And we can see that doesn't work very well. Anyway. <laughs> so the sooner I can get onto that, the better. You know, the sooner I can see through this knowledge uh, lie, right? The story was you're God and, and now you have to, to get the right knowledge so you can make everything work. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. And with that, with everything Dan's talking about, also don't forget guilt, guilt and blame. Yeah, well, that all comes from the, from the because, apple. Because if I'm the doer, then I could feel guilty because it never quite is as good as it probably should be. And I got to blame either the other person or myself. Somebody has to pay. Of course, now we have- said. That's the original sin. And then we now we have 8 billion gods. Everybody thinks they're God. And now we're tr trying to work this all out together in this kind of social game or dream or whatever, you know. And we can see how it's an interesting, um, you know, plot for a movie or a story, you know, but it's not really very workable. So this remains unaffected. This is untouched by all stories. No story applies. You could say every story applies. Same thing. The beauty of this is then knowledge for what it is, is, is completely fine. If you want to bake a cake, you need the knowledge of how to get that recipe. It's completely appropriate and fun and enjoyable, but not when you're trying to figure out who am I, who, you know, this obsessive seeking for the truth. That's what I was looking for. You know, my what is my true nature? Oh my God. And also Tim's, Tim talked about wanting to come home. I had a sense of that too. I don't know if anybody can relate, a sense of wanting to come home. Because the me feels separate. So of course there's gonna be this longing, but most people aren't that sensitive to it. So the worldly distractions are enough. 
it's, and this is there. It's just really the odd, the odd duck that it's almost to such an extreme, at least it was here. It was so painful to keep pretending I was a me that I just couldn't do it anymore. I'd rather say the wrong thing or, you know, not try and look good rather than pretend. I just, it was just, it's exhausting pretending. Any last comments or questions before we close out this evening? Thank you for doing this. Hey, thank you all of you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to everybody. Thanks to everybody who sent donations. They're greatly appreciated. And I'll get this up on YouTube in the next 24 to 48 hours. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Michael. Later. Thank you, Michael, everyone. Guys. Thank you. Have a good one.